Okay. Bye, Lee. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Mike Quigley's got to leave, but he's with us, and he's a member of this uh, full employment caucus that we've just formed, and we thank you for coming by. I know you've got a conflicting, and we're going to have votes pretty soon anyway. So thanks for thank being you. with us, sir. Appreciate it. We Mr. appreciate Chairman. it. Thank you. And we have uh, Sheila Jackson Lee, Mike Quigley, Charlie Wrangle, and uh, of course Barbara Lee. And so let's get started here. Uh, we appreciate uh, everyone that's here. We celebrate the creation of a Congressional Full Employment Caucus. Uh, not just jobs, and, and, and I am personally pleased with the comments about employment that were, were made by the President last night. Uh, this caucus can become exceedingly important, and I'm happy that uh, we're here and we're pushing forward. Uh, how many uh, members do we have on the bill? The, the caucus, right. Uh, but what about the legislation? 67. 57. Oh, that's great. So what we want to do now is uh, uh, make the most of everyone's time. But uh, the, the three ideas we have is to regularly host economic experts and academics and policymakers on creating a full employment. We've got to remember that uh, President, uh, is that Frederica? Ah, yes, I, I recognize the hat. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> right. Uh, we want to organize uh, events in our district, of course, and we want to encourage uh, the media uh, to uh, have a national focus on the struggles of average unemployed and underemployed uh, Americans. Uh, Quigley, Mike Quigley, works a different job every month or so for a day in his own district. And he says it's incredible the amount of uh, press attention that he gets from it. I'm going to be looking for it, but I'm going to qualify what kind of jobs I'm going to work in for a day because <laughs> some of that work is, is not anything we be that proud of. Now, let's uh, start off our discussion with uh, Chairman Charlie Wrangle, and we'll all make some brief comments and then be open for uh, all your ideas. Welcome, Charlie Wrangle. Thank you. My brother. I've never been more proud to be called upon to support the principles that this great country has been founded on. I never thought either that there would be a political clash that would cause the American people to be held hostage because of an economic down spiral that they had nothing to do with. They have invested in unemployment insurance. Insurance is insurance and it should work for them. But most importantly, what made this country so great is that people believe they could come here and be poor and have aspirations and break the economic boundaries and become middle class. I don't know of anybody I've ever met that came here to become a billionaire, but they all came to do better for themselves and their families. So I'm hoping that the president's speech will inspire our spiritual leaders, our business people, and those people who want to make certain that America can fulfill all of its aspirations. Yes, we need new Americans, new ideas, new education, new infrastructure, but we cannot give up the fight, and I'm convinced that we will do more to focus attention on this problem and look for solutions. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Charlie's been working on jobs. This is not a new one for him. He doesn't go all the way back to Franklin Roosevelt, who first uh, uh, <laughs> who first coined the phrase full employment as a goal. And uh, I want to call my co-chair, 
Frederica Wilson from Florida, thank you for taking on this assignment. Uh, and I'd, I'd like to recognize you next, my dear. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. It's, it's, I'm humbled to be standing with such great leaders. Uh, I'm brand new to the Congress, but when I left Miami, I came with one agenda, and it was to create jobs for the people in my district. I have a mentoring program of high school children who graduate every year to work. They want to work. And we're finding that the jobs that they normally seek are being held by adults. So you have this whole generation of young people who are looking for jobs, who do not have the appropriate training for the new jobs that are being created. And so we want to make sure that everyone has a job. So full employment, when uh, our chair Conyers and I began to discuss this, we could think about all levels of people who need full employment. When I was a little girl, everyone who lived on my street had a job. Everybody's father had a job. But nowadays, there are people, I live in a brand new community, and there are people down the street who've lost their jobs, and teachers who have been fired, and police officers who have been laid off, and it, it's a shame. And it has a lot to do with dignity. So we've got to raise up the dignity of these people and remember that if you want to cut the deficit, the best way to do it, put everyone to work, everyone will have money, they'll spend the money, they'll go to the movies, they'll take their families out to dinner, and then they'll pay taxes. So you will automatically cut the deficit if we have full employment, like all of us are advocating for. So thank you so much, and I look forward to working with each and every one of you. Thanks, Frederica. Barbara Lee, the former chair of the CBC, and a former staffer here in the Congress, who is now a very well and highly regarded member. Thank you for joining our Full Employment Caucus. Thank you very much, Chairman Conyers. And first, let me thank yourself and Congresswoman Wilson for your vision and your tremendous leadership in creating the Congressional Full Employment Caucus. I just have to say one thing uh, to Chairman uh, Rangel and to Chairman Conyers, Congresswoman Waters and Wilson. In 1977, I was a staffer to Ron Dellums, and I had the privilege to work on H.R. 50 with Congressman Gus Hawkins, and that was a full employment bill. I actually staffed that for Ron, working with your staffs during the day. And so that really just tells you, though, what tremendous leadership comes from the Congressional Black Caucus and the vision. And here we are now in 2014, still talking about full employment. I believe then under Humphrey Hawkins, was it 3%? 3%? Uh, 3%, we haven't seen a 3% unemployment level yet. And so we have a lot of work to do. And I know that this caucus under this leadership will take us to where we need to go in terms of ensuring that everyone in our country has a good paying job with benefits. One of the primary vehicles and pathways out of poverty is a job. That's what people want. People don't want to have to rely on food stamps or Section 8 or Medicaid. People want a job. They want to be able to take care of their families. They want to be able to purchase a home, rent a house, send their kids to school. They want to live the American dream. And the only way that can happen is if they have a good paying job. And so this, again, picks up the ball uh, from the 70s and takes us forward to get to that full employment economy. So I just want to thank you again for staying the course. Thank you. You remind us of the Humphrey Hawkins bill. H.R. 50. H.R. 50. Now, Maxine Waters is loved, uh, especially in Detroit, but all over the country. Uh, her leadership and dedication to full employment uh, is renowned. And I keep thinking of uh, the King, the summary of Martin Luther King's uh, uh, emphasis. Jobs, justice, and peace. And uh, the justice part, full employment, and political equality. And so I'm happy to have Maxine Waters, 
who was up until just recently, she's now a, a ranking member on finance, but we enjoyed her company on judiciary when she was there, and she still comes by whenever she can. Maxine? Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Thank you very much, uh, Congressman Conyers. Um, I appreciate you and your leadership so very much, and I often tell people that long before I came to the Congress of the United States of America, I knew you, and I, I w had the opportunity to work with you, and you traveled all over this country, and you taught me uh, whenever you're traveling uh, about what we're doing uh, in Congress and, and our issues, uh, to make contact with the radio stations and to do those radio stations while you're in those cities. And I continue to do that uh, because you, you taught me to do that. Uh, I have an appreciation for so much that you have done and your leadership. You're truly uh, one of my heroes. And when I heard that you and Frederica uh, was going to have full employment uh, caucus, I said, whatever John is going to lead, I'm going to be there. And I know what Frederica Wilson has done. I've met those young men. Uh, and they are the most impressive group of young people you will ever see. Uh, when they came out to meet us when we were in Florida, uh, they were all dressed in these uh, sport coats and ties, and they look so good. And um, she's now, you have had thousands yes, of them thousands. that you have uh, organized and helped to train. So these, these leaders on this issue uh, have all of the credibility that requires that we follow them. Um, yes, I, Gus Hawkins was my predecessor. Right. And the uh, Humphrey Hawkins bill uh, is a bill that um, helped us to understand that we should always work to have uh, employment, full employment, and no more than 3% uh, unemployment uh, in this country. Right now, unemployment is still unacceptably high uh, in the country. It's seven point something. In California, it's eight percent still. It's very high. And so we really do need to do everything we possibly can. We, the jobs bill that the president had was a good bill. And we really need to repair this infrastructure. Uh, and for the New Yorkers that are here, I have to tell you, when I used to think about infrastructure. I thought about, you know, the roads and the bridges and the uh, waterways and all of that. But I read a story in the New York Times, I think it was yesterday, that they have these water tanks on top of these tall buildings and that the water tanks are filthy, that uh, they have all kind of debris in them and that uh, they discovered that five, well, a certain percentage of them had E. coli uh, bacteria in them. Wouldn't it be great to put people to work you know, cleaning the water tanks and saving lives and doing stuff. But that's just one example of what we need to be doing in this country uh, to not only provide jobs, but to keep people safe and healthy. And so, John, whatever it is uh, we're going to do in this effort, I'm with you 100%. And uh, jobs, jobs, jobs. That's our mantra. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maxine Waters. Sheila Jackson Lee serves with great distinction on the Judiciary Committee and others, other committees here. But we are thrilled that this activist congressional leader from Texas is with us uh, on the formation of a caucus on full employment. And we welcome you here, my dear. Thank you so very much. Let me uh, congratulate my chairman and my colleague, Frederica Wilson, and the other uh, co-coordinators, because this is a historic day uh, to be able to be counted as a founding member of a legacy caucus. And the legacy caucus is that we are in the spirit of both Theodore Roosevelt, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, John F. Kennedy, and Lyndon Baines Johnson, among others to focus on the creation of jobs and the vision of America. Uh, John F. Kennedy for his investment and creativity as it relates to space exploration, creating a myriad of jobs around. Lyndon Baines Johnson, obviously, for the great society and opportunities for education. 
Theodore Roosevelt with his big stick attitude, which is what the president had last night. And today we stand in sync with him, uh, with uh, this great caucus. We have a big stick and we're going to carry it. And I think the important point that I'd like to make today uh, to all of the founding members uh, is that America is not broke. And unfortunately, uh, we have been living in a broken minded attitude and our friends on the other side of the aisle want to have us dig our head in the sand and not do anything for the American people. Many of us are wearing a blue ribbon because common sense says pass an extension of emergency unemployment benefits. That's just common sense because it's for people who worked. But we cannot get any common sense other than the idea, the misfit idea that America is broke. And I stand here to join with the Full Employment uh, Caucus because in addition to the bill that uh, my good friend Chairman Conyers has introduced, I've introduced H.R. 3888, which says that if you are unemployed or chronically unemployed, we will match you with effective job training for you to turn your life around and be able to uh, secure work. Uh, and we're going to move legislative initiatives like this, but Mr. Conyers, I don't know how your timing is so excellent because we heard yesterday that the president indicated that if Congress can't function, then get out of the way. Uh, for the president is going to look to innovative ideas like this to talk about full employment. Let me lastly say, coming from Texas, we're always thought of as being rich. And most people bypass us as it relates to any issues uh, regarding uh, the question of unemployment. Our numbers are high among women, Latinos, African Americans, seniors, teenagers, and another demographic group, African American males. Uh, and frankly, as I'm reminded of the Congressional Black Caucus jobs tour, traveling with, among others, uh, the members here and uh, Congresswoman Waters who struck the chord that in our communities, those numbers were extremely high. Uh, and so we have a special burden to not let people be forgetful about these particular talents, the talents that Frederica has steered uh, in the very right direction. And so I give you an example in Texas of a young woman uh, that is a young woman, so she fits in the demographics. She didn't, she graduated from high school, couldn't finish college, didn't have enough money, decided to go into the army, this, things would get better, had a three-year-old child, uh, and finds herself living with her father, getting on food stamps, trying to save money so that she can go to a paramedic. She may not be unemployed, but she doesn't have full employment. And so we have a dream that is attainable, Mr. Conyers, and as well, we will be answering the call of all of America because people need work and we're not doing right by them by creating work, and I believe this a caucus will put us on the right path and we'll give President Obama a number of executive orders that he can sign uh, with pride and strength. In fact, I think that should be our number one agenda. Let's write up these executive orders, draft them of course, and ask the president to stand with us on full employment. Thank you all for organizing this caucus. Thanks, Sheila Jackson Lee. Uh, the president has mentioned full employment in his earlier speeches. He mentioned jobs last night, of course. Uh, let me just thank Attorney Michael Darner and Bob Weiner and many of you from coming, for coming here. Are, is there anyone here uh, in our audience that feels moved to make a statement or comment before I open this up to the press? Uh, if not, then uh, does the media have any questions? Then what we have, to, yes, sir. Could you talk a little bit more about the bill that you're introducing right now? Yes, the, the bill that I've introduced uh, is a two-part bill. It sets up two trust funds, uh, one for uh, finding the jobs for people that want to work, and the other is for training people uh, who really don't have much job experience or skills and, and are, are not very employable. 
And, and we take both of these groups into account. And uh, uh, th this is historic. This is the first time we've had a full employment caucus. And uh, we think uh, Jose Serrano has entered the room, and we're pleased to have him join us. Uh, Congressman Serrano, would you want to make a comment before I turn this over to the media, if you, if you want to just say a word? Sure. You've never turned us down before. <laughs> well, <laughs> well I, first I want to thank you all for bringing us together. And uh, full employment sounds to some folks like something that uh, is a pipe dream, and yet in this society, it should be a reality. It should be something that we should strive to accomplish. We spend so much time talking about jobs and we pay little attention to how much jobs really mean for people in, in a society. And so this goal is one of those goals that makes a lot of sense. The goal is that the greatest country on earth should be able to move to at a time when we can provide employment for everyone. That makes sense to me. It should make sense to everyone else. So we. We can't continue to be a society that, that celebrates when the unemployment goes down by half a point and still remains very high. We can't be a society that says that we can celebrate unemployment going down, but we won't give people unemployment insurance. We need to move to the day when unemployment insurance is not the issue. The issue is everyone having a job. And we do that by educating people, by training people, by retraining people, and by committing ourselves to that goal. So I want to be part of this movement, and that's why I make this long walk from next door in my office uh, oh, to, to join you. It, it was a struggle, <laughs> but, uh, but I did it. And, and thank you, John, for, for your leadership always. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, this has been a wonderful coming together. Uh, now we've got to produce uh, the, the task of going from where President Franklin Roosevelt first used the term full employment does not take into account what we were very polite about up here today is that in African American Hispanic communities, unemployment is in 30% or more. I'm, you're talking about seven or 8%. Yeah. That's national, which is not good. But in our communities, we, we we, we experience profound unemployment, and, and without a job, poverty is the only alternative. And so uh, for all those reasons, many of us, like me, put this as our main goal. I'm on Judiciary Committee. There's not a lot uh, about uh, judiciary issues in this, but if I can move this ball forward, and we can succeed to raise this higher and higher in the understanding of everybody in the country, we're going to get there, and, and we can do it. So I thank you all very much. Bob Wiener. Well, easy. Uh, we've got to build up a base, a grassroots base. That's, that's what gets them moving in the right direction. We're not going to talk logically or rationally and persuade them over to our side. Uh, it's organizing and having these groups across the country. That's what I like about the diversity of the 60-some-odd uh, members that are on H.R. 1000, our full employment bill. Uh, that's where how we're going to get movement, but until we come together like this, and we're all in at least three or four caucuses each, uh, we we can spread this out and and get it done. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yes, please do. Um, 
I mentioned uh, my colleague from California. And, uh, many people may not remember Empowerment Zone's creation of Charlie Rangel. Um, obviously, he had a, an accommodating uh, president, but um, targeting and, and layering through the thinking of caucuses at that time, Ways and Means, Mr. Rangel, which I uh, admired, and uh, it turned into Enterprise Zones for those who didn't get Empowerment Zones. Uh, the uh, Out of Poverty Caucus uh, that has now taken up, that many of us are members of, uh, you have a member on, on Mr. Serrano on appropriations. I think we need the layered approach, but I, I really, uh, I don't want to put any pressure on the White House. I don't direct the White House. We don't. We work as three branches of government. But I think there was a spark last night, um, and I think it was an open door, uh, not a recklessly opening the door. And I would frankly think that if uh, strategic aspects of what we're talking about can be utilized. Remember what we said, if you can't act, get out of the way so that we can directly respond to the needs. And I think this caucus will provide with the out of pocket, out of poverty, not out of pocket, out of poverty caucus can provide uh, that uh, leverage, uh, progressive caucus, that leverage uh, for the White House to work with us and to really work with the American people. I I'm excited about it and um, um, Mr. Conyers, you may have something in judiciary because you know you may have uh, the challenges of the use of the executive order and I think all of us know that he is, uh, the White House is perfectly within their legal uh, constraints to be able to use an executive order and I think we need to take advantage of it. Thank you. Yeah. Let me, no, go on, go on. No, 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 no. no, I just want to remind us that full employment uh, is a, a key strategy for crime prevention and crime reduction yeah. and you know our young people, men, women, young people throughout our country you provide a pathway to a job. Every community we have seen the crime rate go down because the majority of people that want to work, uh, desperate people do desperate things. And so this bill, this caucus is extremely important for a variety of reasons, but we can't forget that uh, you know crime prevention is really key in full employment. Right. Thank you. Chairman Conyers, and thank all of you for coming. It is my hope as an American that this caucus is going to be a lightning rod for the good people that we have in this great country that have no voice in the Congress, that they will refuse to have a handful of people who determine to bring down the presidency and the country and have so many people suffer. There's such a big role for the unions to play for the educators to play, for the spiritual communities to play, in order to allow this country once again to be the citadel of what liberty, democracy, and full employment can be. And so we will be reaching out not only with uh, educators and experts, but we do hope that those people that believe they have no voice will know this caucus is here. And we expect that we will be getting a lot of attention for those people that say, what are they doing in Washington? We got to give them one heck of a lot to be doing. John, Thank you. Thanks, John, everybody. John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. We'll all be in touch with you. Uh, anybody that wants to leave.